Hi there, my name is Matthew Palmer. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make most of your time that you're spending in the house at the minute. Let's have a go at painting a watercolour picture from scratch, no sketch, using just three colours and two brushes. The colours we're going to be using are a yellow, a blue and a red. Now there's variations on these colours. I'm using natural yellow light, natural blue, natural red. These are primary colours. You can use any bright yellow, any bright blue and any crimson red. So it could be cadmium yellow maybe, it could be ultramarine blue or it could be alizarin crimson but these are natural yellow light, natural blue, natural red. These are more vibrant. These are my own brand of colours. We've got a sheet of quarter imperial watercolour paper stuck to a board which we're going to fold in half and we are going to pop the coin in the back of the tissue and grab it and twist it this way so that will give us that nice sun stamp when we get to that stage pop that to one side I've squirted the colours from the tubes into the palette there's the light yellow, there's the red and there's the blue now all these colours aren't necessary to get started in painting it's a good idea to sketch this thing to a board. This is an old, old, old sketch pad I've got here. I've used a bit of masking tape just to, just to stick it down to. This is a not surface paper, N-O-T. Not means it's not smooth and it's not rough. It's somewhere in the middle. Let's keep things nice and simple. Two brushes, that's all we need for this one. Two brushes, we've got a size 20 and we've got a size 10. A round brush, now it doesn't have to be a 20 or a 10. It could be say a 14 or a 16. These are the sizes or maybe a eight or a 10 or even a 12 would do you for the smaller one. Paper size, this is quarter imperial as I mentioned, you could do smaller if you want to, it's up to you really. Anyway, let's get started, let's make most of those hours you're spending in the house at the minute. This is a great thing because when you're putting paint on this paper, you forget about everything, think about that one. Let's start off with some water and let's simply wet the paper through, keeping things nice and simple here. Now. This is my own brand of paper. This is Matthew Palmer paper. It's cotton. It's available through watercolor.tv. That's www.watercolor.tv. That's, that's also the place to go if you want to um, sign up to the online watercolor tuition. My watercolor TV website has been live since 2009. It's the original art video on demand uh, service. So check it out folks. Um, at the minute, the price is reduced to $49.99 for the year. You also get 30-day free trial as well. So there's never been a better time to waste away the, the hours in the house and do some painting. Now let's add two or three coats of water. That's important, you can see the shine. That's important because I need to make sure this thing is wet. Because it's cotton, the first bit of water that goes on will basically be absorbed into the paper. Let's get into the habit of cleaning the brush, wiping off the excess on the side. That's quite important, okay? Think about that as you do this work. Take a nice rich yellow, mix it into the palette. There's barely any water here because the water's on the paper. Nice and thick, there you go. And just do horizontal brush strokes moving down every so often and you kind of cross the brush. You can take that yellow almost straight from the blob if you want to. With a sunset, you can go wild with colours. Beautiful paper to work on. It's just like working on satin. Let's clean the brush, wipe off the excess. I don't need to be too precise about cleaning the brush because um, I want to mix some red into the yellow. This is natural red. Bit of yellow there. You can see the kind of orange tinge. That pretty much goes all the way to the top working across. Now as you bring this in, kind of cross the brush over, forward, back, forward, back and so on. So you're letting your brush mix on the paper. Look how smooth that is, beautiful. The transition of colours, wonderful. Clean the brush again, it doesn't have to be too clean. Wipe off the excess, that's important to do that a little bit. Let's add some blue into the mix, so I'll put it into the same colour, so it's a darker blue, put that across the top, so again primary colours, notice the grey, see the forward and back strokes, move this blue down, keep going until it kind of disappears 
into this. So we've gone from dark into light. Let's take the coin that's wrapped in tissue and let's give it a good stamp about there. Can we see the sun? Beautiful effect. It's giving that lovely, that's a round English coin wrapped in tissue that. Super job. Okay, now let's use the same brush. Let's use the same brush. I'm cleaning it this time really well and I'm wiping off the excess. And I'm mixing quite a strong colour here, so I want a nice thick blue, little water, tiny bit of red so you get a slight purple. And then just add a spot of yellow, that'll start to bring it towards a grey for us, okay? Think about those silhouetted clouds, so we've got this nice kind of dark grey kind of colour. Wiping off the excess on the tissue here, we're going to basically lay the brush flat around here and roll across. Now as I move across towards the sun, pick more colour up there, always do that before you put it on the paper. As you move across, start to lift the brush off the paper slowly, so you start to get that point. So you get that nice tapered effect, beautiful, the first part of the clouds. Now notice that the edges are spreading, that's exactly what I want to do with this one. I want it to be soft. Let's do another one here. It's like a it's like a wiggle and you gradually lift the brush off the paper as you move along towards the centre. The stronger the colour, that little dab on the tissue makes all the difference. Let's bring it over here. Let's bring another one. So I'm putting less pressure, I'm not putting as much weight on the brush here. We're going to bring it across over the sun and then put a couple of the clouds around there. Now that's my basic clouds, I want to work these in, I want to soften them in with the same brush, nice and clean, really clean and this time I want to use my fingers to squeeze the water or even a piece of tissue to drag the water out of the brush and my first thing to do is I want to soften, can you see how the brush has gone like a chisel shape? I want to soften the base of this, the clouds. And imagine the sun is illuminating the clouds. So every time I do this, I'm giving it a little bit of a pinch. If I move the picture up a bit, you can see that I'm pinching the brush. And I'm just sort of using this part of the brush. Have a practice at this, it's a lovely way of working. But if you get a bit of an angle to it, can you see it almost looks like it's illuminating the cloud? You can blend these in as much as you want to. Same same over here as well, look, see the drag? That lovely, just lifts the whole thing because the sun's here, of course, it's catching the base. With the lower down clouds, wipe the bottom as well, but <laughs> wipe the bottom, sorry. Um, as you move across where this finishes, just give it a wiggle to help the cloud to disappear into the sky. But there's no reason why you can't put a couple of little highlights in there as well. I think it adds to it. You can also use this brush if you if you mould it to a point, you can just use your brush just to tap where it goes over the sun so it doesn't look too harsh. Clean the brush every so often, squeeze it again to recharge the brush, re reset the brush. And I could even pop in a few little highlights on some of the peaks of the clouds. Yeah. You know, as the sun's catching it, does that make sense? So you, you, you sort of tap it and it gives that beautiful effect. We do the same here as well, though. There we go. So little, little highlights on the edges. It's a great way of doing a sky, putting a bit of light into it. Now all this is happening because the paper is still damp, it's a good advert for the paper, you know? Beautiful effect. Because it's cotton, the paper's holding the paint inside the paper. That makes such a difference for this. Because for the first time it's giving you the effect of... It's it's almost permanent, it's almost a permanent paper, it kind of holds it in place and you can see here how 
I mean, that's just totally transformed that sky. Hopefully you agree, putting, putting light in. Now that needs a few moments to dry off. So, um, and I want to paint this picture in real time with you. I don't want to edit and cut around with this one. So what I want to do is I'm going to pop this on the top of, literally on the top of my radiator, radiator actually here. Um, and that'll give that a few minutes to sort of, to sort of dry. Let's bring the picture back into play folks. It's been sat on the top of the radiator for a couple of minutes. It's not 100% dry, but it's not bad. You can use hair dryers if you're following this at home, if you're painting along. Now across the bottom here, I'm gonna paint in some, some mountains, okay? Now, so far we've only used the one brush, the 20. Well, let's stick with that. Let's let's stick with that brush, this, this quite large brush. Now, I've just cleaned the brush. I'm just mopping off the excess here. You can see that the water is a bit dirty. That's that's fine. Doesn't matter at all. Not a problem whatsoever. Let's make some more of this strong dark colour. Let's take the blue. Let's make a grey. So basically, three primary colours. If you put all three together in the right order, you get this gorgeous grey. Now, why is grey so important? Grey is the colour of shadows. So it's a big chunk of the blue, tiny little spot of the red. So you see a little purple and a little bit of yellow, and as the yellow goes into it, it starts to go grey. And that grey is so important. Now if you've got a bit of a shake as you do this, you could bring this down here. Let's bring some edgings to this. And let's take this right off the side of the paper there. No so second revisit it if I want to put some more character into this thing. Make use of the point of the brush to create this kind of silhouetted mountain effect. Clean your brush really well in the water and then take the tissue and wipe off the majority if not all of the water. And then just use the water to bring this down so you're fading it away. So it almost disappears down into the mist, let's say. You can see I'm, I'm putting the brush on and I'm actually dragging the color here. Now I want to take a little bit of the yellow, quite thick. You can see that, can't you? I'm bringing it into, into view there more for you and pop the blue with it. So you get this rich green. And that's going to go in the corner because that's closer to me. You can see I've, I've, I've put this green in because green is what we call a warm colour um, versus a cold grey. So it's creating more depth and it's lifting the picture. Let's clean the brush really well. Let's squeeze it through the fingers, a bit like we did with the clouds on the, um, on the sky. And then let's use a similar system for putting some light areas in the sky. Not in the sky, in the mountains even. Can you see how you can mould this thing? Almost imagine it's where the sun's catching it. Now every so often you want to recharge that brush and squeeze it through your fingers. I'm doing it off. Don't do it over your picture. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Put little splashes all over it so. Can't go wrong with this, so I'll give it a nice but just look how that's given me contour. Practice that. If it doesn't come off, same as if it doesn't come off here, it's probably because your paper's too wet. You can always give it a bit of an extra scrub, and if you keep going over it again and again, it takes that little bit extra off. But the secret is to have a damp brush. Now, if it's completely dry and nothing's coming off at all for you, if you give it some extra scrub and dab it with tissue, that, that helps to take it off. That's called lift out, and that's another technique you'll learn um, on watercolor TV. Super, beautiful. Again, I wanna give that a few seconds just to dry, so I wanna pop it on top of the, the radiator. Um, like I say, hair dryers work just as well as anything, so you can always use a hair dryer if you need to. While that's drying off, move the palette into play, and we're going to mix up a good strong colour. Now I'm going to go from the 20 into a 10, 
smaller brush. I don't want a huge amount of water, so again, that little habit that we said wiping off the excess on here does make a difference. Let's mix a very thick um, green colour. So we'll take the blue, nice and thick, look, good strong colour. We'll pop a bit of red, not too much, and then put a big thick blob of yellow into it. Um, because I want this to be a very dark colour. Now if you need more colour, obviously that's the great thing about using tubes, is you can get a greater consistency of, of colour from a tube than you can from the little little sort of rectangular or square pans that you might have seen. So, uh, so a nice thick chunk of colour, yellow, blue. And that bit of red makes the green quite dark. Almost, if you imagine sort of pine, like a pine um, green, you can see the colour there. It almost looks grey. And the more yellow, the more towards the green it goes. So that's a mix of all three. So it's, let's say it's a big chunk of yellow, tiny bit of red and then blue until you get a, a dark, almost like a, a British racing green, that real sort of strong pine tree kind of um, strong green. Let's bring the picture into play. That's been sat on the radiator. It feels nice and warm, which is good. You can see that's, that's pretty much dry. Now over this side, in fact, I want to sit down for this because I've been stood up for the entire picture. So excuse the noise of the chairs. I move a little bit closer in here. So I've got this, this rich, vivid green. I'm going to wipe off the excess on the tissue. And I'm going to paint in a couple of tall lines to start with. So that's going to be the start of these, these pine trees, okay? Now, what we do is we basically put this line in first. And then we go either side and we flick out in one direction. Put a few dots at the top and you've got your first pine tree. Something to have a little bit of a practice on that one, okay? And the reason I put that line in first because I always think it makes the process easy because it gives you a start and there's a few little dots at the top just add something don't they beautiful way of working it really is now this is also nice to pop one just coming in from the corner there but this color wants to be nice and thick a few dots and then in the middle in the gaps just popping some little little lines going up so you've almost created like a little little corner of a forest or something. It's quite it's nice there. And again, just just look how it's giving that little bit of depth to your painting as well, which is which is nice. Let's just pop in a few little bits of dark around here. And every so often I'm gonna pop in another one of these trees as well. You can have as many as these as you like, really. It's up to you. There's no there's no no script to any of this, is there? So what's important though is taking your time and just not rushing through this and if you sat painting at home doing this just bloody enjoy it you know and the thing is at the end of the day when you're painting in watercolours or any medium watercolour more so there's something about the softness of it you just drift off into your own little world you know and everything that's happening out there outside you just forget about it and that's what I want people to realise you know there's Art is a big therapy and it's a, and it really is a great way of passing the day. And I've been doing this, I've been teaching watercolors for over 20 years and uh, it's something that I've spent my lifetime coming up with techniques and things that make watercolor painting accessible for everybody. I'm just gonna make sure, I'm just gonna rotate this little bit here and just, because I want to make sure that tree's got a little bit of a nice little pointy bits at the top. So that's a great little corner there because it just kind of frames the picture nice. Now over this side here it's tempting to bring in a, a couple more of these. So if I just bring one here, fairly tall, again we'll do the flick out just the same. Can't go wrong really, can you? A 
maybe one just coming in here to finish up. So, so just a couple more basically, just gonna let you work in um, and And again, folks, just while I'm finishing this picture off here, please do. It's a great time. It's never been a better time. You know, I've put a lot of work into creating watercolour TV for all the artists out there. People that want to get into painting, want to have something to do. And, you know, and I'll say it one more time, but there's never been a greater time to paint from home. Um, all you need is a bit of water. Even a plate will do. I mean, these palettes are great. Yes, you can buy the palettes on the website, but a porcelain plate, three colours, yellow, red and blue, primary colours, you can produce these gorgeous watercolour pictures. And uh, I'm just going to turn this upside down. And that's just going to get you started. It's going to let you produce dozens of paintings. Um, there is so much resource on watercolour TV, folks. And at the minute, we're offering a 30-day free trial as well so you can have 30 days for free to enjoy it if you don't like it just cancel it it works fine it really does love the job so those little little pine trees in the corner they're going to frame things quite nicely and i think one of my favorite things to do on any watercolor project once i've finished it's basically the ones with the richness the strong vivid colours that we've got here is to take away the masking tape. So let's remove the masking tape, folks, because it puts a nice crisp edge around the picture, as you can see. Beautiful. And I really hope you've enjoyed doing that, that quick and easy watercolour painting, folks. I've really enjoyed painting that. Please do check out Watercolour TV for hundreds and hundreds of hours of online tuition. And I will see you soon, very soon, for some more watercolour painting. Goodbye.